Recipe for Disaster is a recent early access release by developer Dapper Penguin Studios of Rise of Industry fame. Published by Casido Games, and many thanks to them both for providing a review key. As with all other reviews, the following are my honest feelings on the game, no one gets any special treatment for providing a key, which is probably one of the reasons I don't get many keys thrown at me. It does mean, however, that I will do a review, good or bad. So now onto the main event. Recipe for Disaster is a restaurant management simulator that not only puts you firmly in control of pretty much every aspect of running a restaurant, from building it all the way down to individual recipes, but it also throws in the curveball that if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. The hint is in the name, it has disasters, currently the major one being fire. However, the game has a solid early access roadmap, and many more are planned, from minor events like someone dropping plates all the way up to pipes bursting and flooding the restaurant. There are also various random events that can crop up from both staff and customers. The aim to force you to make difficult decisions. Do you let your head chef go home early and serve bad food the rest of the day, or do you make them stay and risk them quitting completely? So currently it is in early access and has just had its free play, aka sandbox mode update, which has its own set of objectives to give you something to aim towards outside of the campaigns. The game is very much still in development and has a comprehensive and dare I say somewhat exciting roadmap planned out for the future. Now I'll be brutally honest, the term early access often makes me cringe because I see too many large studios using it as an excuse to beta test games. However, for me, Dapper Penguin Studios is exactly the kind of developer that should be using early access. Firstly, because it has a single main dev, Alex, who runs the show, which in turn means he is extremely responsive to the community who are playing the game, taking on board ideas, feature requests, and dealing with bugs. One of the things I love about these small teams, Alex in particular here, is that I can go over to the Steam forums and see him responding to people's questions, their feedback, their bug reports. It's the kind of service you just don't get with big companies, and in turn, you can see how much heart and soul goes into these types of games. Build your restaurant from the ground up with an ever-growing array of items, paint, and floor choices. Hire staff with specific skill levels and traits that will affect both their performance and their influence, both positive and negative, on other people. Then slot them into custom groups with custom uniforms so you can keep track of who is doing what. Watch your staff level up their skills and choose bonus perks to complement them or your restaurant as a whole. Create not just your own menus, but also the recipes that fill them, including how things are cooked or served based on the wants and needs of your customers. Work on improving the customer reviews, not just through your good food, but also impressive eating environments and providing for other needs like toilets. Manage both staff and customer events with the most suitable outcome. Get it wrong too often and you might find yourself out of business. Keep your staff stress levels down and avoid them hitting a breaking point and quitting on the spot. And really that's just the tip of the iceberg for Recipe for Disaster. With a whole host of new features coming during early access, you can see my roadmap video link below for that. But just to give a few examples, it includes things like competitive multiplayer, more disasters, a restaurant bar, and staff room type items. Now let's start talking about the actual gameplay. The first thing to get stuck into on the main menu is making your own character. This, like other employees, lets you set your skill levels, within sensible limits of course, and pick your traits both positive and negative. Plus, a nice array of options to make your characters look how you want. You can have bright green skin if you really want. Now this character will follow you through both the campaigns and free play mode, as your avatar and as one of the employees of the restaurant. The game has a solid tutorial that was very responsive to button clicks, and there are a few small areas of confusion, like making your first recipe and adding it to the menu, but for early access it was beyond what I would usually expect, and additional updates will be coming to this. The campaign is currently 5 missions, but many more are planned, these gradually ramp up difficulty, and in many ways act as an extended tutorial with various objectives, and more difficult to achieve bonus objectives on top of that. I honestly thoroughly enjoyed playing through them, and even hung around to complete some of the bonus objectives. I will be going back to do the rest once I'm no longer pushing to get this review out. Free play was a new addition the day I got the key, and having spent some time with it, I was really impressed it had its own set of objectives in tiers which you can push towards. I had feared it might be very bare bones with no real aims in sight, so props to the dev team on that one, Free play has three difficulty levels and also a custom option, so you can set things like starting cash failure options, as well as the settings of 
what kind of restaurant it will be and how fussy customers and staff are. Now, the basic place you start in any of the modes is building your restaurant. It's an intuitive system which you will be familiar with from other management games and things like The Sims. You drag to place walls, you paint them on each side, you place doors or windows or other items on them, you paint the floor area, you put items down, you know the drill. The only thing that I did not like here was that I had to click to paint each individual wall segment. A click and drag to paint option would be nice for a quality of life feature. There are already a wide selection of items in game, they all have various pricing, and the bigger, more expensive items are usually better in terms of the influence they provide to give your restaurant better reviews. There are many more planned, including seasonal specific items such as Christmas ones that are due out soon. Of the items, I found the most important positioning was that of tables and chairs, much like in real life you need to ensure that there are clear routes to doors and toilets, otherwise people will end up walking outside the building to get to where they need to go. And it's also very important to have a variety of tables as you will be catering for up to groups of four people. Of course, it's not just about plonking down items and clicking a game speed. You need to ensure your staff are assigned the right tasks. And the game has a priority system built in to help with that where you assign staff to an object or a cleaning zone. And you can also manually give your staff individual instructions above and beyond the tasks you've assigned them. For example, you might want one of them to go and talk to a customer when an event occurs. Placing your staff into groups and giving those group specific uniforms is a very helpful option in the game. It helps you keep track of who is doing what more than anything else. I had one for chefs, one for servers and one for cleaners for example. Once you are up and running and your reviews are improving, you'll need to expand to seat more customers and in turn add more staff, toilets and kitchen appliances. That said, if things start to go badly, you'll need to start selling things off to help settle the balance sheet. Like any good management sim, it's a fine balancing act to keep the business afloat, and obviously higher difficulty levels are less forgiving. By the way, don't forget to set cleaning zones. No customer is going to use a filthy toilet that's not been cleaned in a year. I mean, would you? You'll also need to pay attention to customer food likes and dislikes, ensuring there is something for everyone on your menu, or the negative reviews will start piling in. You can make some truly weird and wonderful recipes, or you can keep it simple, but fancier food means higher prices, and let's be honest, this is all about raking in the cash. Oh, and don't forget to order ingredients for your new menu items, as well as having enough storage space for those ingredients, otherwise you won't be serving anything. Improving the look of the restaurant is also a must, if your place looks drab then people will review it as such. I did find that currently there does not seem to be a brightness want or need, so I cheekily built most of my restaurants without windows. You also need to sensibly deal with staff and customer requests. Pick responses wisely or your staff members might just quit on the spot, or a customer might leave a particularly negative review. Many things influence staff and customers. You can check their thoughts tab to see if there are things you can change to improve their experience. Let your staff get too stressed though and they'll hit a breaking point. Hit this twice in a day and the staff member will walk immediately. As the name also suggests, disasters are going to happen. Fire is already in, which can quickly get out of control. You'll notice many items say spreads fire under their details tab. I forgot at least once to put down fire extinguishers and it spreads really fast. And many more disasters are planned, both minor and major. The UI is well placed and most of it is explained very well during the tutorial. My only complaint would be that sometimes the menus stay open and you miss that there is something behind them when you first start playing. An example of this would be the customer review staying open if you open the restaurant menu, and then you can't see the food price that is to the right hand side behind that. I also found at times there were a few too many little message pop-ups at the right hand side obscuring my objectives window. Just reining in the number of those on screen at once would probably help with that. Now, the game is in early access, so of course I encountered a few bugs, most of which have been fixed between the time I first spotted them and now, which is about a week, and that's pretty fast service. I did not encounter any game-breaking bugs, so really it's nothing that I would not expect from an early access game, so I'm certainly not going to mark it down for that. Now, because it's an early access game, I get to add myself a little list of things that I would potentially like to see in the final version of the game. So the first would be my quality of life features. The ability to click and drag to paint walls would be a nice addition. The review window auto closing when opening the food menu or other menus for example. 
A feature that I would like to see is it would be nice if there was some way to encourage you to put more plants and items outside the building other than just me wanting it to look pretty. And with the other disasters being added, I wonder if there's scope for a maintenance skill to also be added so someone can do repairs. And then finally, it would be nice to see if there was some kind of brightness request feature that could be added, like the influence feature for how good looking the restaurant is, just some way to encourage you to put in windows or lights as the case may be. Sort of an extension of the current influence system where a brightness meter also shows up at the side. Graphically, the game stands out in its class for its attention to detail, from the cooking animations to the little order slips appearing on the kitchen service window. The devs have got it all covered. Graphical updates for the characters are ongoing, but there is a good variety of clothing, hair and general look choices already. Items all have a very distinct look depending on the quality, and there are various final plate or bowl options for meals. Now, not many games provide that level of detail that I can pick to serve a plate that looks like fish and chips, or a bowl that looks like noodles. The world around the restaurant is quite nicely designed, and you have access to many of the items used there to make your restaurant look stunning inside and out, and there is nothing stopping you from making a lovely outside eating terrace, except maybe some of the typical British weather. Sound-wise, the background music is very nice and relaxing, as I would expect from any management sim. There are suitable background and animation sounds, including a bell when a dish is ready for service at the kitchen window. It's a little detail like that which really makes the game stand out. Recipe for Disaster is a prime example of what early access should be for. A small developer making a game that the community can influence and provide their feedback on. Yes, there are bugs, it's early access, but they're getting fixed fairly rapidly. And yes, not all the planned features are there, but again, it's early access and it's the community's chance to influence how these proceed with a developer that actually seems to want to listen. It provides a management sim experience with a difficulty level somewhat controlled by how deep the player wishes to delve into the underlying complexity. Thus, it is something that you can approach as both a newcomer to the genre, as well as an experienced player looking for the next challenge. I enjoy living on the edge, so I was risking going bankrupt on a daily basis, but you could equally build up a stockpile of profits before you start expanding. For me, it stands out already for its level of detail, both graphically and in underlying systems. But that's just for starters, it has an exciting roadmap of new features that will add both more fun and complexity to the existing game. It has a way to go, but I actually feel like it will get there, unlike some early access titles. Right now, there's plenty of fun and intuitive gameplay, and as of recording, I've put almost 12 hours into the game. And that's without pushing to get all the campaign bonus objectives and not putting more than a couple of hours into the free play mode. I will of course upload these as separate videos at some point on the channel. Now currently the game is available on Steam at £14.99, €16.99 off US dollars I think there's plenty of content and replayability there for that price, plus with the regular updates including the new features and a Christmas content update coming this month, I can highly recommend giving this one a go. I won't score the game out of 5 as it's early access and I will reserve that for final release, but early indications are certainly positive. Well that's my review, I hope it was helpful, I hope you go check out the game, a link will be in the description down below to the Steam page, and as always please do like, share and subscribe, it really does help out the channel, and I'll see you all soon for some more videos.